Hi, this is Jamie Davis from Light Reading, coming to you from Shenzhen. So I've managed to pull a Joe aside from the GSA for a couple of minutes, and we're just going to have a brief chat about the big trends in the 5G world. Joe, how are you doing? Very good, thank you. So let's talk about 5G. Now, there's a lot of chat, a lot of hype, a lot of buzz, but what does 5G actually mean to you at the moment? And what is the the, sort of the big use cases and the big investments that you see developing over the next sort of 24 months, let's say? Well, the key thing about 5G is going to be the availability of new spectrum. There are some spectrum efficiencies coming with 5G, but it's really the availability of 5G spectrum and 5G being engineered and, uh, and aligned with broader spectrum availability, especially into the millimetric wave areas. And from the point of view of where 5G really fits, I think it's two key areas. Mm. Um, obviously, it's going to bring in more capacity. Okay. And that's going to give, uh, then, uh, I, I, uh, lead to more towards hotspots and then fixed wireless access. So over the next 24, 24 months, those are the two key areas. And so from a hotspot perspective, that's where you need capacity, where there's probably a bit overloading in the networks at the moment, but also in building. And especially the millimetric wave, 26, 28, even the C-band, you know, the 3.4 to 4.2, there's 800 megahertz of spectrum there yeah. that is going to be ideal for 5G and for those, um, those hotspot areas and fixed wireless access. Okay, okay. And talking of spectrum, I mean, what are the biggest sort of opportunities and threats that you see sort of on the horizon? Well, from the, from the threat really perspective, it's more about the cost of spectrum. Um, and obviously, the higher the cost of spectrum, the less opportunity operators have to invest in their networks yeah. and their 5G networks. So that has always been a key issue within the industry. And I think as an association, GSA would like to see, um, you know, maybe spectrum co costs spread over a longer period of time, uh, make it a little easier for uh, operators to invest. Um, but then from an opportunity's point of view, uh, you know, getting access to new spectrum, harmonised spectrum, and global uh, spectrum, that's, that's key for us. Uh, we have a large spectrum group um, of over 70 members from our member companies, and they're working at a regional level, at an ITU level, to really uh, position GSA as a, a trusted technical partner to help them un understand the spectrum issues as we go into WRC 19 this year. And what's the, 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 sort of the GSA strategy ahead of that conference? Well, obviously, we, there's, two, there's three spectrum bands that we are looking to try and, and secure and for mobile. One is the 26 gigahertz, uh, which is uh, all there's been trials and tests already, um, and uh, networks looking to be launched in, in that spectrum band. But then also the 40 gigahertz and parts of the 50 gigahertz spectrum. Yeah. And what we're looking to do is try and get that harmonised spectrum agreement and have a you know a friendly cooperation, so that you know other users of the of the band. And we've got agreement on, you know, in-band and adjacent band uh, uh, interference, etc., so that we can all work together and, and live harmoniously, really. <laughs> Perfect. And one final question. Um, looking at the consumer side, really, I mean, what, what's your, what are your thoughts on sort of device availability, uh, you know, as we, as we sort of move forward into the 5G world? Well, GSA, we published uh, in March our first 5G ecosystem report. Um, it's, in just a few weeks, it's been downloaded over a thousand times. So it's our most popular report at the moment. And also, last night, I put up our latest chipset report, which also includes 5G chipsets. And I think that's what has been the difference, is that we've seen with 4G, for instance, it wasn't so much about smartphones in the first year. It's very much about dongles. Um, and this time with 5G, we're seeing the availability of smartphones and phones. And so there are, in our report, we had identified 33 devices, 12 that were uh, phones and smartphones. Yeah. I checked this morning, there was now 35 on our database. Um, so that is uh, expanding. And it's been the availability, I think, of chipsets that has yeah. really helped uh, drive the ecosystem towards smartphones as well. And I think that's been a, you know, one of the key drivers. And so I expect 5G to be deployed and rolled out a lot faster than we saw 4G. Well, Joe, really appreciate you taking a couple of minutes and let's get back and enjoy Shenzhen. Thank you.